save up to 50% on your medicine bills. Ask your doctor or pharmacist if PharmaDynamics has a generic medicine that's suitable for you. Some people look forward to winter weather because they think they'll finally get some relief from the allergies and hay fever. But then the temperature drops, the days get shorter and yet your allergy symptoms are still there. Bum, bum, what is going on? Dr. Mike Levine is one of South Africa's leading experts on allergies and the head of the Asthma and Allergies Division at the Red Cross Children's Hospital in Cape Town. Welcome to Doctor's Orders, Dr. Levine. Thank you, good to be here. Dr. Levine, could you explain to our viewers what an allergy actually is? If somebody comes into contact, say, with dust, normally they might just get irritated and have a sneeze or two, but if you're allergic to it, you're gonna get an exaggerated immune reaction to the stuff in the dust, and then you're going to have lots of symptoms of your allergy. People often use the word hay fever. What is hay fever? So hay fever is just one of the diseases that has got a major component of the disease that involves allergies. Yes. The real fancy name is allergic rhinitis, and it comes in two forms. The immediate form, which is called intermittent allergic rhinitis, and the chronic or long-term form, which is called persistent yes. allergic rhinitis. And hay fever responds specifically to that immediate, very short-lived form of allergic rhinitis where the person comes into contact with either a cat or a dog or yes. house dust mites, something like that, and they immediately start sneezing, itching, running eyes, watering eyes, all of those kind of symptoms. Yes. Usually hay fever is the minor form and the more chronic form or persistent allergic rhinitis, people often call that sinus. Yes. It's called sinus. Okay. That has got very, very many more serious uh, effects on the body. I got sinus, doctor. I got doctor, sinus. I got sinus. So, People like that, they have blockage of the nose. Mm -hmm. They can't breathe properly. They can't sleep properly. They can't concentrate. Yeah. They don't do well at school. Uh, the kids, everybody thinks that they are full of nonsense because they're not concentrating and they're, um, they're itchy and they're rubbing their ears and they're rubbing their eyes. So people think they've got ADHD yeah. in their class. Now people expect seasonal allergies usually to happen, let's say in spring, but people are finding at the start of winter experiencing allergy symptoms. Why is that? Well, you're absolutely correct. It's the most common time to get uh, intermittent allergic rhinitis would be in the spring season when all of those pollens are coming up. But there are lots of other things that can trigger your allergies that occur inside the house as well. So during winter, people are spending more time indoors. So they're more exposed to cats and dogs and house dust mite. Mm. This is full of house dust, but actually what is inside here is the house dust mite, mm. which is a tiny little microscopic creature related to a spider. Mm. It's so small you can't see it. Yeah. It lives in and on your skin, and then it excretes its excrement, and you're actually allergic to the poo of the house dust mite. It sounds pretty revolting. Yes. Um, and the best way of avoiding house dust mite is to actually remove- Not get a house. Well, yes. that's, the, that's precisely Go the point. Homeless. Not get a house. Go yeah. homeless. Because yeah. the problem is that it lives in the nice parts of your house. Okay. It lives in your bed. Yeah. It lives in the soft furnishings, your lovely couch. So the most important thing is to actually get rid of the soft furnishings in your house. The other stuff like cleaning the surfaces with a damp cloth and getting rid of fluffy toys and covering your mattress with a impermeable mattress protector, using specific sprays to kill house dust mites, all of that is secondary. And in yes. fact, the hard thing about avoiding house dust mites is just getting rid of the, the, the soft yes. furnishings. I think if somebody has got severe allergy, like yeah. severe persistent rhinitis or sinus, and they're taking a lot of medication, then, and they're sensitive to house dust mite, then avoiding house dust mite is worth the hassle and the effort. And those kind of people need to be aware that in addition to their medical treatment, which we'll talk about in, the minute, in a yeah. minute, there is another form of treatment that's also available called immunotherapy. Yes. It involves actually giving the person the thing that they're really allergic to. It's given in the form of drops under yes. the tongue and then that's taken every single day for two years. Jeez. The benefit being that you reduce your symptoms, you reduce your medication use, and the benefit of that is actually for the rest of your life. How else do you treat allergies? Okay, so the mainstay of treatment is to look at the symptoms that you are having mm -hmm. and then to address those symptoms. All of those symptoms are caused by a specific chemical in the body yeah. called histamine. Mm. And if you take a drug that blocks the action of histamine, you can 
basically take away those symptoms very, very easily. So regular antihistamines for the immediate symptoms of hay fever are very, very effective. The second part of the treatment would be for those symptoms of the persistent allergic rhinitis, yeah. and those are predominantly the blockage that is caused in the nose and the post-nasal drip from that chronic inflammation and swelling that is actually around on the inside of everybody's face with yes. allergic rhinitis. And the best way of dealing with that is with a steroid medication, but one that is given safely. Yes. People want to know about allergies. Are there any websites or social media that they can contact or refer to? Definitely. There, there, there are two very new and exciting initiatives that we've just started that can help people with allergies. The first is a Facebook page. Yeah. It's called Allergy Epicenter. This Facebook page will allow people to just communicate with each other, talk about their issues, talk about their problems, network. The second website is the website of the Allergy Society of South Africa. That's at www.allergysa.org. And that website has got a lot of educational materials for patients as well as actually for doctors. And on the very front, it's got a button that people can press to sign up yes. for a new initiative called the Severe Allergies and Anaphylaxis Register. This is a way of us gathering information about people so that we can help guide them with their treatment and hopefully get more resources for allergy sufferers in South Africa going forward. Thank you so much, Dr. Levine, for joining us on Doctor's Orders. That was fantabulous. You need to come back. Okay. Oh, yes. It was good to be here. Great. <laughs>